Sometimes you want to go visit Japan, but you just can't make it work. So you want to bring Japan to you. With Real Life's Sakura Densia 3D Creative Bookend, you can do just that. And so since my wife and I both are learning Japanese and have been to Japan, I bought this for her as a gift. And so I wanted to show you what that experience was like so that you can know what to expect if you decide to get one of these creative bookends. And I'm going to give you some tips so that your experience can be even more enjoyable than ours was. So stick around to the end so you can see how ours turned out and see if it matches, you know, the picture on the front. <laughs> Now, even though these are manufactured in China, I did see these for sale last year on my work trips to Japan. But I didn't actually buy this one in Japan, not only so we could have the English uh, instruction manual to make sure we didn't make any mistakes, but also because I didn't want to try to fit something like this in my suitcase. So you might be wondering, well, how long does it take to put one of these things together? Because they've got multiple different types. They've got Sakura Densia, which is this one. They've got Sunshine Town. They've got Magic House, which is kind of like Harry Potter themed. They've got Time Travel, which also is reminiscent of Harry Potter to me. They've got a lot of cool kits, and I'll talk more about those uh, later on. But you might be wondering, is this hard? Uh, you know, how long did it take us? Working together, it took my wife and I about six or seven hours to do this. And we had to space it out, of course, because with a toddler and with cats and things like that, we can't just sit down and, you know, do the whole thing. We also went at kind of a relaxed pace so that we could talk and laugh and do different things like that. And so I could, you know, film to be able to show you how it all worked. So it might go a little bit faster uh, depending on, you know, how fast you go and whether or not you're working with another person. So I came up with a set of tricks that you can try to keep in mind when you're putting this together. As I said, if you have uh, little kids or pets or both, uh, in our case, and you can't really, you know, do this all in one go, which you definitely don't have to, then I recommend erecting a magical force field around your model as it's under construction. That way you won't lose any of the pieces, pieces won't get lost by a certain fluffy monster. You won't need to get any tools because the kit comes with all the tools you'll need, including a tiny little screwdriver uh, that you'll have to use to put some of the larger pieces together. However, I'm going to caveat that by saying that Depending on the country that you're in, there are certain limitations on what they're allowed to put in the box. So yours might not come with batteries, which is not a big deal. They're kind of, you know, normal AAA battery that you would put in, you know, almost anything else. But the big one that you have to be aware of is, at least in the US, if you're already in the US, it is not going to come with the glue that you need to be able to put a lot of these pieces together. It's not held together entirely by glue, like some kind of airplane model. I would say most of it is actually not held together by glue. In that way, it's like half 3D jigsaw puzzle and half, you know, detailed model because it's got both of those aspects of friction, holding all the wooden pieces together and then using glue to add some of the decorations. So I went to the store and got some craft type super glue that worked really well for us. And so in addition to a link to the bookend that you can get, I've also got a link down there to the glue that we used because if you're ordering in the US, like I said, it probably will not come with the glue inside the box. And so that's the one thing that you will need to make sure you get before you sit down to make the bookend. Now I have to say, since most of this is wood and it's very thin wood, you do have to be careful and learn the material to make sure that you don't break things. The wood is quite flexible. So there's kind of, uh, sometimes you have to push a little harder than you might think you would in order to get it to fit. Uh, in a lot of cases where I think if it was made out of plastic, it would probably just break, but because it's wood, it'll bend. And I really like that about it. But there are some other pieces that the company has discovered break really easily. And so because of that, they include extra pieces for some of those really small components that might get broken easily. So if something does break, it's not the end of the world, you can still complete the bookend. I know you're probably thinking, well, Carl, you like this thing so much. Are they paying you to make this? Like, well, well, no. I really just wanted to get this for my wife and I thought it was really cool and we enjoyed putting it together. So now I'm not being sponsored by them, but you can support the channel by using my affiliate link down in the description below. As you're popping pieces out of the pre-cut wooden panels, you'll need to take a little bit of the sandpaper that they provide and sand off some of the, the edges or little bits of wood that stick out so that you can fit the pieces together properly and also so that it'll look more polished and more complete of, you know, a model. There's a lot of overlapping pieces and so to make sure that everything lines up, they've already pre-cut outlines in some of the surfaces so that you can know where the other piece goes exactly on top of it. So make sure you pay attention to that. Relatedly, make sure that you pay attention to all of the symbols in the guidebook. 
For example, there's one important symbol that's got like a little flower with, with petals on it, and that tells you whether or not the side that you're looking at on the wood should be the side that's printed on or etched in or not, because there's certain pieces that need to face inward and outward depending on what's on the one side or the other. So you have to make sure you pay attention to that symbol. Also, there's gonna be symbols for when you need to add paint. There's gonna be symbols for when you need to flip over a piece so that you're putting it on the right side. So just get used to those symbols that you see and make sure that you're not skipping over those symbols as you're going through the picture guide to put it all together. Follow all those tips. I think you'll have a pretty good time putting this together. If you've been watching my channel before, you know that I'm learning several languages at once, one of them being Japanese. And this is no exception to that because there is Japanese inside this little scene of Japan. And so I wanted to tell you kind of what the name of this particular model means. Sakura just means cherry blossom, this famous pink Japanese cherry blossom. And then densia is not actually a word in Japanese, <laughs> technically speaking. I think the company that made this um, in China was going for densia, like with an SH, densia, which means train because it is, you know, a train and there's all these sakura blossoms. So if it was in Japanese, it would say sakura densia, but instead they went with densia, um, leaving out the, the SH. And maybe they did that so that it's easier for some people to pronounce. Maybe they just liked it better for branding. I'm not sure. If you're not learning Japanese and you're not able to read it, that's okay. You can just be very aware of all the diagrams in the instruction manual, like I said before. However, if you are learning Japanese like me, or you're interested in learning, then you're gonna have no problem with this if you're using my preferred way of learning Japanese, which is Story Learning's Japanese Uncovered uh, self-paced online course. And I've got a whole review that I did of that. And if you're interested in learning more about that or the other languages that you can get from that company, then you can watch my review right up here. Anyway, back to the actual book nook. You know, this is what it's supposed to look like, right? So, it's time for the big reel. Did ours turn out like the one in the picture did. So, here's the big reveal. Ta-da! Mite, mite! Kawaii ne! <laughs> so, as you can see, this turned out really, really well. As you can see, there's something on each side, and it is just the size of a book, and it fits perfectly on our bookcase as well. There are so many details in here that you can just stare at it for a long time. The light really helps it come to life as well. We had a lot of fun putting it together. So I've got two more, I've got two more tips for you about this now that you've seen the finished product. One is you might think, well, there's a light in there and that's cool, but how do I get to that? How do I change the battery? Well, they made it easy to where, you know, you just pick it up and on the bottom, you can change the battery out pretty easily. You just get your little screwdriver, which you should probably hang on to if you don't have one like it, and then you can replace the batteries in there. However, you might be a little confused when you turn it on for the first time. You might think you did something wrong because you put the batteries in, everything's all connected, and you click on and it's not lit up. So I'm turning it off, turning it on. Oh no, I did it wrong. It's not working. Uh, but wait, as long as you've got it set to on, all you have to do is hit this little button right here. You just tap it, then it'll turn on. And that's kind of the cheat code that I wanted to give you. So. Switch this on, and then to actually turn the light on, you use the little button down here. Kind of had to figure that out the hard way. Also, about these little lights. Even though they're LEDs, for some reason, they do draw a lot of energy for how small they are. And so they will drain the battery pretty quickly. So if you want to make sure that you get the most life out of your batteries, then I would recommend only using this when you're going to be looking at it or, you know, at nighttime when the room's going to be dark enough for you to see the light. Or you can just leave it on all the time and <laughs> go through a bunch of batteries. But yeah, I wouldn't leave it on overnight because then you're just wasting the battery. So if you want to get the most out of it, try to keep it lit at night when you're going to be looking at it. So if you or maybe someone you know likes to put together big puzzles or models, and this would be the perfect gift to give them, or maybe if you can think of somebody who might like the finished product, then you can buy it for yourself and you can have the fun of actually putting it all together and then you can give the finished product to them and they can put it on display. So. Either way, definitely check it out. They've got a lot of different options, not just this particular model. They've even got a whole set, which would include this one. And now that we've done this one, I really want to get all the rest of them. <laughs> and you can see what they look like on the screen here. So if you want to get the Sakura Densio Book Nook or any of the others that I've talked about, use my link down below and enjoy bringing a little bit of Japan to your home.